Hey everybody, welcome back to Blockchain Central. Google has recently announced that their Sycamore processor has achieved quantum supremacy. They allegedly demonstrated that their quantum device was able to solve a problem that a classical computer couldn't, or that it would take it an impractical amount of time to do so. What does it mean for the future of cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology? Let's break it down. We have already talked about the impact that quantum computing could have on blockchain in general. You can watch the video up here. But in today's video, we'll focus on the specific announcement by Google and what does it mean for DLT. Let's start at the very beginning. What is quantum computing? Traditional computers rely on a binary system of information transfer managed by networks of transistors. Bits in a traditional computer can be either one or zero, depending if the circuit allows electricity to flow through or not. That is, so far, the best and most scalable way of building IT infrastructures. Quantum computers rely on qubits or quantum bits that, due to a peculiar nature of quantum mechanics, can be both zero and one at the same time. This property, called superposition, allows quantum computers to store more information at once and perform selected operations much faster. Effectively, instead of analyzing a one or a zero sequentially, the phenomenon allows two qubits in superposition to represent four scenarios at the same time. The speed of quantum computers is said to be exponentially faster than classical computers when performing selected tasks. The best way to illustrate that advantage is the traveling salesman problem, or TSP. The exercise of finding an optimal route between cities and returning to the place of origin. The issue with this computation is that its difficulty grows significantly with the number of variables. It is said that finding the solution for 33,000 cities would take an average computer 15 years, but when we increase the number of cities to 85,000, it would take 136 years. It is important to note that classical computers are still better at certain tasks than quantum computers, and the latter really excel at optimization processes, machine learning, and encryption. This leads us to October 2019, when Google announced that their quantum computer managed to execute a randomly chosen sequence of instructions in only 200 seconds. According to the announcement, the same computation performed by a classical supercomputer would take approximately 10,000 years. The claim was immediately countered by IBM, a company that coincidentally also works on quantum computers, who said that their Summit supercomputer could deliver the same calculation in only 2.5 days. Even though 200 seconds seems much faster than 2.5 days, it effectively erases the supremacy claim. According to the definition, supremacy is only achieved when a classical system would fail or take impractically long to solve the same equation. By supercomputer standards, 2.5 days would not be considered impractically long for complex computation. According to John Perskill, a physicist at Caltech who famously coined the term quantum supremacy, the announcement should be understood more as an incremental step than a full-blown revolution, but it's a positive development nonetheless. So, what does it mean for blockchain? First of all, a fully functional quantum computer would be capable of breaking even the most sophisticated encryption standards just by using brute force. This could mean that public key cryptography, which serves as the backbone for multiple blockchain and crypto projects, can be in danger. The exposure is exacerbated by the fact that blockchain security relies on one-way mathematical functions, equations that are relatively easy to perform one way but extremely challenging to calculate in reverse. This type of cryptography is used to generate digital signatures and validate transactions on the ledger. A functioning quantum computer would be capable of much faster reverse engineering, which would allow a bad actor in position of such a computer to forge signatures, impersonate other users, and gain access to their digital assets. Effectively, a quantum computer could utilize the so-called Shor's algorithm to reverse engineer a private key from a public key recorded on the public ledger. The fact that we're still not completely sure what a fully fleshed out quantum computer is capable of makes it even more difficult to predict its impact on blockchains. Some analysts predict that the technology might end up making DLT obsolete altogether. On the other side of the spectrum, we have quantum skeptics such as ex-Bitcoin core developer Peter Todd who claimed that Google's quantum breakthrough is for a primitive type of quantum computing that is nowhere near breaking cryptography. 
One frequently quoted argument that supports the threat of quantum computers is the recommendation issued by the NSA to all US government agencies involved in cryptography. The NSA ordered them to halt any development of quantum susceptible systems. What's more, that recommendation has already been issued four years ago. The question that remains is whether such computing power can have influence on proof of work systems and mining in general. David Schoen, one of the pioneers of digital cash and the developer of Praxis, an allegedly quantum resistant blockchain claims that POW systems would remain fairly secure from a quantum attack. Instead, bad actors would target wallets associated with such blockchains. Inside a Bitcoin network, miners test various inputs that produce a hash. A qubit based machine should be able to test multiple solutions at once, resulting in much faster solutions, which could technically enable a 51% attack. In practice, that might be a challenging task. First of all, Programming a quantum computer to outperform ASICs would be prohibitively difficult. Also, once this becomes a real possibility, it is likely that quantum computers will be widely available, effectively negating any advantage that a bad actor equipped with one might have. When it comes to proof of stake, the opinions are divided. The aforementioned David Shom says that proof of stake protocol has a higher risk of quantum exposure, but other sources claim that it technically should be safer than a proof of work network, as it relies on stake rather than computing power. Of course, multiple developers are already working on quantum resistant blockchains. One such initiative is the Quantum Resistance Ledger, or QRL. The premise here is that users can sign only one transaction with one key. The signature changes every time the user signs a new transaction. Another solution could be quantum key distribution, QKD, that relies on the quantum properties of the photons that transmit cryptographic keys. The aforementioned Praxis network also claims to be quantum proof. One thing is for sure, the blockchain community needs to be aware of both the opportunities and the risk of quantum computing. If we are to trust Vitalik Buterin, we're still some time away from a fully functional and applicable quantum technology. The founder of Ethereum compared the recent Google announcement to the atomic bomb. The fact that it exists does not mean we automatically have access to fusion energy. Nuclear weapons were used in war for the first and only time in 1945, and now, 75 years later, we still don't have an energy positive fusion reactor. We'll be watching the developments closely and we will keep you posted when news emerges. What's your take on quantum risk? Do you believe Google really achieved quantum supremacy? Let us know in the comments. Before you go, please note that this content does neither represent financial, legal, or tax advice, nor is it supposed to be understood or interpreted as solicitation to buy or sell any securities, coins, or tokens. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to Blockchain Central to never miss a beat. Also, check out our blog, link in the description below. You can also follow me on Instagram to check out my other projects. See you in the next one.